The enemy's plan is to steal, kill, and destroy. And if he's got your mind, he's won. We as an African-American community love bringing religion into our mental health issues. It's always a, oh, that's just the devil, or it's a, that's just a spirit on you. There's a stigma about mental health in the African-American community. Rather than seek treatment, many hide their mental illness or rely on their faith. But is it outlandish to believe a higher power can relieve our emotional suffering? There's no situation or circumstance uh, that you face that's not addressed in the Bible. And depression is one of those. Research finds that strong religious ties can lessen symptoms of mental illness, such as depression and anxiety. Producing psychological and social benefits, religion functions as protection against depressive symptoms. This connection can be found for religious persons, depressed or not. Religious activities such as prayer, meditation, attending church, and religious readings allow depressive believers to identify and release negative thoughts and focus on the positive, God. More importantly, Religious involvement helps believers cope with or adapt to stressful life circumstances, as well as depression. Uh, most people who are faith seekers and faith walkers are trying to elevate their mind, their bodies, their soul, their spirit from a lower state to a higher state. deal with it through the preaching of the word to encourage people to see how the word of God relates from then to today. We do it in Bible study by gaining greater understanding like we would in any other course of study, but even more so how the spiritual component is, is relevant and present in every situation and circumstance. Religious African Americans tend to experience lower levels of psychological distress in response to serious problems than those who aren't, as well as exhibit a lower risk for developing any mood disorder, including depression. So how exactly does Christianity help these believers cope with depression? I believe it has. It helps give a very strong foundation of, uh, with my faith and my beliefs. It does help me keep myself from going down a negative path. Or Church has helped me through my depression because it's introduced it's led me to meet people that have also suffered with depression and they tell me about how they overcame it and how they're dealing with it now and leaning on God has helped me because I don't have to be alone because I know he's always with me. I subjected myself to certain certain things that I was using as coping mechanisms I was now spiritually bankrupt because again the Bible doesn't say that trouble won't come it says it got. It says it's gonna come, but God will like sustain sustain us through it. So trouble was coming, but I was bankrupt, so I couldn't get to a place where I could see how God was gonna carry me through it. If I don't know nothing, I know the word of God, but it's hard when you're going through stuff to really believe and act on it. And my faith. My faith gives me strength, it gives me comfort, so why not go back to the place where I feel safe and where I feel strong and where I feel whole? For believers like Sierra, Edwine, and Victoria, a close relationship with a higher power brings hope and dedication to treatment. But how much of a role is religion actually playing in their recovery? I personally don't think it's just religion. I think it's a trickle-down effect from you deciding to take a step to believe in something that you feel like is bigger than yourself and changing your life to fit that accordingly. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And so whenever uh, we 
uh, replace depression with faith. Um, people mind, people lives, people mood, all of that changes. And it, it changes, we believe, because of the higher power, Holy Spirit, God enters into our lives and gives us a renewed hope and a renewed outlook on life. There's an intrinsic type of hope that can be instilled through religious and spiritual teaching um, that say, for instance, that uh, God has our back and that we don't have to be uh, necessarily perfect and that it's intended that we have troubles. That's just part of uh, the broader plan of the universe. And so that hope can then lift us out of the immediate pain that we're experiencing um, and consider the broader possibilities that are, are waiting for us in the future, if not even right now. Despite the benefits, alleviating depressive symptoms is sometimes bigger than religion. As Bonelli, Du, Koenig, Rosemarin, and Visay found that religious involvement lessens depression in 61% of observation and clinical studies, 6% conclude that religion and spirituality lead to higher rates of depression. This correlation is strongest among believers struggling with family issues, including abuse and marital issues. This means that although Christianity encourages believers to find strength in God through their troubles, Recovery must include other resources and methods. In agreement are researcher Dr. Timothy Smith and professional licensed counselor Dr. Wanda Harris. If people genuinely take an intrinsic approach to religiosity, it is effective. Now, is it completely effective? No. Life is complex. People who are strong in spiritual are strong in religious. Also experience very, very dark you can have somebody that has depression or bipolar disorder that participates in the wrong type of spiritual environment and it can be a complete disaster. Not only are the effectiveness of other coping mechanisms discussed among professionals, but believers also realize that religion alone is not the answer. Before, I would have been pigeonholed into just thinking about spirituality, but now my lens is much bigger and wider. And I'm actually helping others to say, hey, have, have you thought about seeing a counselor? Have you seen a psychiatrist? It's okay to get prayer, to pray about it. It's okay to read the Bible, the Quran, or whatever you want to do. But what about doing these other things too to help you? I think that is important too as well. I do believe that your spirituality can help manage um, your emotions, but um, to completely eliminate, no depending on the severity of your situation. Because you can be in a situation to where you get depressed, like something happens, like you get upset at work, and let's say you can pray or whatever, or somebody can counsel you or something, or you know whatever, and then you can feel better like in that moment. Yes, sure. But I'm talking about if you got ongoing depression and you're going to be crying every night, no, you need to be going to a doctor. Apart from religion, what are other ways for coping with depression? Some other ways to deal with depression, I recently started to go see a therapist, so that's really been helping me cope with everything. She's been helping me see the more positive um, things in life as far as my negative outlook on things and different type of struggles I'm having. Besides staying spiritually upright, I've been exploring things that I like to do. Photography is one thing. Like I've gotten really into that as a hobby and just kind of throwing myself into my work. Not staying busy as a distraction, but staying busy because it's something that I actually like to do. I don't like being idle, I realize. And now I have time to fully devote to what I want to do. These believers have come to realize what mental health professionals have known all along. Religion isn't effective as a sole treatment for depression. In fact, religion and mental health practices can work hand in hand in combating mental illness. You know, some people don't see uh, in scripture, um, you know, how uh, illness relates. But, you know, I, I think of the story of the demon-possessed man. Uh, he was called Legion because of uh, the thousands of, of uh, demons that were in him. 
I can relate that to schizophrenia uh, or when hurt people are hearing various voices. And uh, so to me, uh, it, there's, a, there's, a, there's a dovetail there that you can go to scriptures and you can see uh, how Jesus uh, talked about, you know, evil spirits. Um, and, and that's how I began to relate what scripture has in it to mental health issues. Sometimes we allow stress to overpower our way of thinking. And when we do allow that stress to overpower us, it puts us in a position to whereas we need to seek counseling uh, from God first, and then we need to seek counseling from people that are outside to help us deal with the problem that we're facing. Just as powerful an influence on depression as religion is the media. Unfortunately, the perception of how the media educates audiences on mental illness is primarily negative, associating mental illness with violence, crime, impulsiveness, and danger. If I think of local news only right now, you typically only see mental illness portrayed when um, a postpartum depression filled mother has killed her infant, or you see it only in the extreme. Nationally, I think we do a terrible job. I think we love framing situations in bad light and then using mental health to do it. Now. Mass shooters, murderers, and crazies. Persons with mental illness are consistently seen as aggressors in the media. We as the media are in charge of educating a lot of people on certain things, and mental health is now becoming one of those. Investigators are taking another look inside the gunman's home tonight. It comes as we're learning new details about his final days and what may have been his undiagnosed psychiatric illness. On Tuesday, media outlets identified the shooter as 68-year-old Raymond Kmetz, who court records show has a history of mental illness and run-ins with the law. Various research notes that consistent exposure to negative depictions of mental illness influences negative attitudes toward persons with mental illness. Grinello and Polly found that television viewers watching 11 to 20 hours weekly, whose main source of health information came from television, were more likely to believe persons with mental illness needed discipline and control as young children. Thornton and Wall concluded that negative exposure heightens audiences' perceptions of people with mental illness as dangerous. For non-believers and those lacking faith, the media can moderate the effects of religion on depression. So how can the media improve the conversation around mental health? We never talk about the successes that people have had that are dealing with mental health, that they're writing books, that they're great artists, that they're talented, that they're vocal, that they're advocates. We don't talk about any of that on like a local or a national scale. And that's a problem. And that's a problem that needs to be fixed. The media needs to do a better job in telling our story. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to have depression, anxiety. It doesn't matter if you're white, black, but especially if you're black. I feel that B T they I see the changes that they're doing, but it's only when something happens. Let's not have another celebrity die for you to say that we stand with you for mental healthness. For mental health. Let's not wait till mental health month for us to start sharing awareness. Let's do it now. Because that's that's what they do. They wait till somebody lose their life for us to speak on it. Overall, religiosity is an influence that works best alongside professional methods in the medical field. This influence is much stronger for those strong in faith and spirituality. For those believers, the media's depiction of mental illness pales in comparison to a higher power. I think if it wasn't for prayer, if it wasn't for God, I'd probably kill myself by now. God will sustain them through their highs and their lows. Media, it just tells you to go, just go talk to somebody and you'll feel better. I mean, yeah, you'll feel better, but what happens when you're at home by yourself? You got to know how to pray. That was one thing that I had to learn. 
Be there for 